is football time in Tennessee, and the beer barrel is up for grabs as these two get together for the 90th time ever. It's the Wildcats of Kentucky in their season finale, and Tennessee in its final home game. Bob Carpenter and Dave Rowe, and welcome back to the SEC. A great afternoon for football, but not a great season for Kentucky. They beat Louisville first week, nine losses since. Now, Dave, they've had one shining light through those nine losses, though. Oh, yes, they have, Bob. They've got one real star, and it's Mo Williams. Anytime you're one in nine, everyone's pointing fingers saying, hey, what's wrong with your team? But Mo Williams plays tremendous. He's got a great attitude. He's a great competitor. And he really needs to have a big game today for them to be in it. They need to keep him on the field. He's done great, but their defense has not. They've given up 266 yards a game on the ground. And today, they face two outstanding Tennessee running backs. Oh, two running backs that are tandem that are really ready to play. And that's James Stewart and Aaron Hayden. Both of them average over five yards a carry. They're well on their way to big seasons. They're both seniors, great competitors, and they're ready to play today. And how about that balance? 262 carries between them. Only two apart are those two. Now, Tennessee has a lot of incentive. They can win out and go seven and four and go to a pretty good bowl game. Oh, an excellent bowl choice they have. They're going to have. They're going to have a big bowl if they win out. And they're looking to crack back into that top 25. All the hoopla and all the atmosphere of Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. Even some new real grass. Doesn't the field look great? The artificial turf is gone. And the volunteers are ready to wrap up their home season for 18 seniors. 16 Kentucky seniors played their last game ever. Cats and the Vowels coming up. Curry and the Kentucky Wildcats 1-9 and nine on the season. They have not won an SEC game this year. They are 0-7. Volunteers are five and four. They're three and three in the league. And if they win out, they can go seven and four. They play at Vandy next week. Well, what's this beer barrel all about? Let's check in with Bob Kessling. Bob, this is the beer barrel that's been playing here, Tennessee and Kentucky. Hi there. Since 1925. Basically, the winner of the game gets to take it home. Last time Kentucky took it home was in 1984 here at Neyland Stadium. Tennessee's won the last nine in the rivalry. Bill Curry told us yesterday it really hasn't been much of a rivalry because Tennessee has dominated. He hopes his team somehow can muster it up today to put some more bite into this rivalry. But the winner gets to take this home, either back to the Commonwealth or staying here at Neyland Stadium. Where it's been since 1985. 84 is the last time the Wildcats were able to knock off the Volunteers in this series. Bill Curry is in his fifth year at UK and says he will come back. In fact, he has a contract through 1998. It's a gorgeous day for football, a little bit cool and breezy, but it's a brilliant, clear, and sunny November afternoon. Philip Fulmer is in his third year, his second full year at the helm of the Volunteers. After the slow start, they've played well, and Philip told us yesterday they've got a chance to finish the season with a real good feeling based on how they're wrapping things up. He has a great kicker. Kentucky won the toss, and they will receive. And their two return guys, Keo Sanford, a freshman wide receiver, and Clyde Rudolph, the senior, are two of the top four in the SEC. Clyde is 27. Keo is number six. Kentucky is one of those teams that doesn't win the toss and defers. Their defense has had a lot of problems this year. Out in front of the 10-yard line, it's Clyde Rudolph having trouble with it, so Keo Sanford ends up with it. He gets some room to the near side, and he will be knifed out of bounds at about the 23-yard line by Jason Parker, the outstanding Tennessee defensive back who's working on special teams after a 10-yard return. Boy, Bob, you talked about this grass earlier. It is, it is a marvelous field. I haven't seen a better field this year than this one. Pookie Jones left after his junior year to play baseball. Sophomore Jeff Speedy is the quarterback. We might see Antonio O'Farrell today, and we might see a freshman, Matt Hobby. Daryl Dickey told us. Kentucky runs out of a multiple set. They're most effective in the eye doing just that. And out to about the 27-yard line is Mo Williams, and he was tripped up out there by Scott Gallion, the Volunteers' leading tackler. Speedy has Williams, an outstanding sophomore halfback. Michael Woodfork replaces Damon Hood, who's hurt. Clyde Rudolph and Sanford, good, dangerous receivers up front. Mark Askin is a good senior to watch. At right tackle, he's out of Louisville. Harry Jones is their most versatile offensive lineman. He can play three different positions. 
Second down and five. Long counts both times. And again, angling off the left side is Mo Williams, and this time, there's not much there except Craig King of Tennessee. Volunteers play a 4-3. Ben Talley has moved to a down position, and they've been a lot better since he did that. The man who helped all that happen was Tyrone Hines, who doesn't get the start today. Craig King does at middle linebacker. And keep your eye on number seven, Jason Parker. He's having a terrific year, says Larry Marmee, the Tennessee defensive coordinator. Third down and three for the Cats. And they will option right with three backs behind Speedy. He will be bumped out of bounds by guess who? Jason Parker. We've got two great free safeties in this game today who love to play against the run. Parker and Melvin Johnson of Kentucky. Boy, and Parker is the man. He comes up big. Number seven, he comes in your screen, plays center field. You can see him just get the bounce, stops him about just about a yard short of that first down. Nicky Nichols averaging 40 yards a kick with a long of 58 this year. And Nilo Sylvan, who had a UT record-setting day last week for the return, but he won't get a chance to return this one. A little scripper that goes out of bounds right around the Tennessee 30-yard line. He'll get 38 yards on the kick after all those bounces. And the Volunteers are led by a freshman quarterback. You know his dad, Archie. This is Peyton Manning, the freshman out of New Orleans, sharing some time with Brandon Stewart. He's completing 61% of his passes so far. 104 yards a game in total offense for Manning, who's a big kid at 6'5", 207. And they give a slot look to the backfield, and there's James Little Man Stewart. He's out over the 40. A flag flies as he's out of bounds at the 45-yard line for a gain of 15. And Bob, one of the things that Kentucky has got to do is they've got to get off their blocks up front, slide to the ball carrier, and make tackles. They may, they may be lucky that they had this yellow flag on this play because it's going to be holding against Tennessee. Ron Gilbert at the head of Bobby Gaston's SEC officiating crew today. We may be able to see this on the right of your screen. Bounces in the hole now. Get outside. See how the blockers are just hung up? The uh, tacklers are just hung up. There's the hold call right there on the tail end of that play. Yeah, it's a shame for Tennessee because he was already outside. Well, Tennessee's really got to stop the run today. Excuse me, Kentucky's really got to stop the run of Tennessee. They've got to put a lot of people up in the box and force them, almost force them, to pass. Four-man front. Manning gives it off to Stewart, and a very good play in the backfield. Howard Carter, the left end. Preseason All-SEC, he's a senior from Dodge City, Kansas. Tennessee runs a multiple offense. They've got a very good, reliable fullback in Mose Phillips. You'll see James Stewart, Aaron Hayden, Sharon Time, Joey Kent, a good deep threat. And then up front, they've got some great ones. Kevin Mays, their only senior. He's a star. Jeff Smith and Bubba Miller have swapped right guard and center because Bubba hurt his thumb, and he can't snap the football. Five wide receivers on second and 12, and it's up to the 35-yard line. Kendrick Jones with his 12th reception of the year. He's a guy who doesn't catch the football very much. Kentucky plays a 4-3 defense. They've got a good front. Carter, Sullivan, Stinson, and Soupy. Chad Hudson flanked by David Snarden and Dante Key. And then in that secondary, keep an eye on number 25, Melvin Carlton Johnson III. He has 118 <laughs> tackles this year. That's incredible from a, from a free safety position. It just proves he's coming up an awful lot on the run. Hey, their number two guy has 61 tackles. They're down in five. Another host of receivers, so they go with a draw play. Little man Stewart outside, far sideline. And he's in the Kentucky territory at the 45-yard line with a first down. 22 yards on that carry around the right side. Well, on this situation, you're thinking pass all the way, and it's a draw play up the middle. Kentucky had decided to go with three down linemen. A missed tackle there right there would have stopped it. That was Stephen Hall who missed the tackle, and down the sideline he goes. You kind of gamble there. Do you just try to get the pass rush, drop back into coverage? When you have that draw, they get into secondary. They got a lot of room. Great call by David Cutcliffe, the offensive coordinator of the Vols. Now a straight give to Stewart. He's going to be busy here early. And he can't get around the corner. 
George Harris came up from strong safety to get him. And that's a junior who played Juco ball at City College of San Francisco who's not that experienced. Lehman Boyd, their starting strong safety, is out for the season after breaking an ankle. And Bill Curry needs to play situation defense. He needs that second down to be second and six or seven or more to force the pass so they can dictate what they're going to play, the defenses that they'll play. Kentucky giving up 192 a game through the air, but 266 on the ground. Another draw play. Stewart working off the left side. Now he cuts up field inside the 35-yard line, and that'll be another first down for the Volunteers. Stewart is getting closer and closer to Johnny Jones. Came in number two all time, and Aaron Hayden over 2,000 at 2089. Stewart already well up over 40 yards on his carries today. Kind of tough to break the all time rushing record when you have to share time like that. That was an amazing statistic. The 132 rushes coming into the game by Stewart and 130 by Hayden. But on the ground. And a pretty good play along the line of scrimmage by Robert Stinson, the right tackle. And Bob, one thing that's really noticeable to me right, right from the start is that Kentucky, when they're playing their blocks, they've got those linemen up front, they're not able to get off the blocks. You've got to use your hands up front. You've got to keep those offensive players away from your body. Robert looks like an offensive lineman. 6'4", 283. He's a senior out of Cadiz, Kentucky. Aaron Hayden is in there. James Stewart gets a breather. Well deserved. Second down and seven, almost five minutes into the first quarter. Manning with some play action. Ball was tipped. It was Mike Schlager. It might have been Dante Key 87, not 97. It's Dante who can play either of the outside linebacker positions. Now watch these defensive linemen come up and lock up with the offensive players. They see none of them breaking clear. Dante Key, 87, comes around the outside, but he really wasn't blocked. He got up in the passer's face. That's his forte. That's the sixth time he's broken up a pass this year. He also has an interception. Eighth play of the drive coming up. It'll be third and seven. Tennessee last year, 43% on third down. This year, rather. And out of the shotgun. Off to the left side, and it's caught by Joey Kent. Fans aren't happy with where they're going to mark the football. It'll be very close to a first down. Well, he came back for the football. He was right at the first down marker, and he came back and looked as if he may have come, but with the marking looks as if it may be a little bit short. Watch this. Quick pass. All he does is just do a curl at about, at about seven, eight yards right there. Good delivery. Boom. Right inside. And see where he comes down. He comes down on the other side of that white line. It's going to be close. That was Joey Kent's 33rd catch of the year. Let's see if it got Tennessee a first down. I think even if it doesn't, I think they'll go for it. Look at Peyton Manning. Say, don't stretch that chain like that. You're pulling the links too tight. <laughs> Couple of inches. Now John Bexford, Tennessee's kicker, has some range, but not tremendous range. His longest field goal of the year is 44 yards. If they would kick one right now, he'd have to kick one about 42. This may be where they go into that Tarzan offense, where they bring that extra offensive lineman in in place of the tight end. They've run that offense 39 snaps their last four games. Now that extra offensive lineman serving as a tight end is not eligible to catch a pass. Fourth down and one. Out of the eye and Manning will go straight ahead. And he looks like he got the surge he needed. Manning's a big person. Six foot five. I was standing down on the field. It's amazing when you look at him. He's got tremendous strength in his legs. That was really surprising. Usually when you see a 6'5 person that's a quarterback, he's real gangly, but uh, Manning's got some great strength. You can see it in his arms and his upper body. He's got excellent, uh, excellent leg strength. Out of Isidore Newman School in New Orleans, Tony Reginelli, his head coach there, he was playing high school football a year ago. But he didn't have guys like this to give it to. Aaron Hayden averaging 5.2 a carry off the left side. He's coming off a good ball game last week when Tennessee beat Memphis 24 13 and that's a good Memphis team over there by the way they're playing East Carolina today for a birth in the Liberty Bowl. 
Hayden had 129 yards against the Tigers. Eleven play of the drive coming up. Most of it's been on the ground. Hayden again hurdling one tackler and the ball is on the ground. Was it called dead? That's that's the whole key on this play was the ball down. The ground cannot cause the fumble. I saw one official point to the ground indicating that he was down. Looks like Howard Carter of Kentucky came up with it after a hit by Chad Hudson. Well, let's see, let's see if we can take another look at it. What he's going to do is he's going to jump over top of a pile when he comes down. See if he doesn't get either a knee down or the ball down. Well, from that angle, it's tough to see, but the ball came out. It looked as if the official was in good position to make that call. Nine running plays, three passes on this drive. Manning angling left side, inside the 10, and fortunate to fumble the ball out of bounds is Nilo Sylvan. That's only his fifth catch of the year. Boy, one thing that Manning does so well is get the ball quick to the receiver. That's an out pattern where you usually run out of bounds, but you see he's got plenty of room to turn up field. There's where the ball's ripped out, but again, it just bounces out of bounds harmlessly. 11-yard play. First and goal for the Vols at the four. Nearly half of the first quarter is gone. Stewart bounces off several tackles. And finally, three cats will keep him out of the end zone. But he will get down to just beyond the two-yard line. 25 is Melvin Johnson. No surprise there playing against the run. Absolutely. You can see the initial hit there. Just keep those feet going. Chad Hudson in there. Boom. Just big blocks in there. Just keep those feet kind of grinding and just keep on churning. And Melvin Johnson up on the tackle. Hey, forget that red zone. It's all orange <laughs> around here, folks. 18 touchdowns and seven field goals. They're 25 of 38. Second and goal from the two. And it's Hayden. The goal line and in for Tennessee. And for Aaron Hayden, his first rushing touchdown of the season. What a drive by the Volunteers. Boy, a great drive, used a lot of time. Just a big block up front. Watch most Phillips go in there. Number 19, he clears the way. Let's just go into the end zone. That's big power. Big man on big man. You'll see the lead block there. Find somebody to hit. Bam, there's the person to hit. He picks up number 50, Hudson. Bexford with another one of those extra points. He never misses. That's 146 straight. He's 11 away from Carlos Huerta, who holds the all-time record. But a six-and-a-half-minute drive capped by Aaron Hayden going in. 7 nothing Volunteers. Better than half of the first quarter gone. Tennessee has dominated things. Kentucky's only run three plays before kicking. Keo Sanford on a short kick at his 16. He's got some room in the middle. Now he gets outside and he turns the corner at midfield and he's bumped out of bounds by Jason Parker. Parker preventing the touchdown and we have a flag on the play. Way back at the 28 yard line. A 44 yard return may be negated. Looks like a holding call. Boy, and does that kill you. If you're Bill Curry, you're turning around saying, hey, we got great field position inside the opponent's 40-yard line. Holding. On the return team, 10-yard penalty, front of the ball, hmm. first down. So that's from Tennessee territory back to the Kentucky 18-yard line. Now, the holding is on the top of your screen. You might not even see it in there. It's away from the play. Good movement here to get outside. This is about a 45-yard penalty. It only goes in 10 in the record books, but you look at the field position, they're going to have the ball inside the 40-yard line. Now they're back inside their own 20. And Bill Curry says it's been that kind of season all year long. Gio Sanford, the redshirt freshman from Bryan Station High School in Lexington, and it's all called back. Out of a three-back eye, option left, speedy, looking to pass. 
it's a coverage sack. Nobody was open down the field, and then Shane Burton collapsed on it. It'll be second and long coming up, and let's check in with Knoxville's own Bob Kessley. You know, Bob, the Tennessee offensive line wanted to set a note and a message to set a tempo for this game. They did that on the opening drive. This is a proud group. In fact, it's interesting. Philip Fulmer, of course, is a former offensive lineman himself, so he makes sure that all the offensive linemen play, can, can play any position across the board. Jason Lehman, Bubba Miller, and Jeff Smith have all been his starting center and guard, or at some times tackle in this group. A two-back I look now. On second and 11, Speedy looking to that left sideline. Nobody open, and they've got him again, but he manages to throw it away before he goes down. Well, you've got to have faster patterns. Steve White on him, Ben Talley on him. Those guys have 11 sacks between them this year. See, plays are designed to go down in about, about two and a half seconds. That's how long you think your offensive line can protect you. And what happened to Speedy is he's getting out there and his his runners are still in the patterns. They haven't broken around looking back for the football and he's just got to pull it down and swallow it or take it off and run with it. They're down in 18 so they had whistled him down before he threw that ball away. A loss of seven on the play. Now he will keep it on the ground. Mo Williams working off a blocker. Pretty good job by Scott Gallion, who had a blocker tied up and then managed to get a paw out and knock that wildcat off of his feet. And Kentucky will have to kick it again. Well, a third down has been a horrible down for Kentucky this year. Only convert, converting less than 30% of their third downs. Can't play win. It's awfully hard to play winning football that way. Came in at 29%, 0 for 2 today. And the Volunteers will have good field position. Nilo Sylvan stands at his own 43. Not very well hit by Nichols that time either. At the 48, there he goes. Far side, one man can stop him. And he's caught from behind. Nilo Sylvan had a 57-yarder last week against Memphis. He went 136 in the game for a UT record. Donnell Gordon got him from behind. He almost broke another long one, 34 yards that time. Well, watch what he does when he catches the football. Breaks that little break and right up through the line. That's what you want to do. You break that seam, and now it's off to the races. But there was two things wrong with that punt. It wasn't long, and it wasn't high. Other than that, it was okay. Huh? <laughs> Coverage had no time to get Nilo Silva. First down at the 16. Hayden weaving his way for three or four. Dante Key, the first man there. And then the ball carrier was downed by Robert Stinson. Boy, Bob, you put such a tremendous pressure on your defense when your offense is in three, out, in three, out, and you give a ball to, to Tennessee with this good offensive line, great backs, running, power. That just, that really takes a starch out of your defense. Lock runs with 4-10 remaining. First quarter, Volunteers knocking on the door of that checkered end zone again. Second down and six. Manning to Hayden. Looking to turn the corner. There's a flag out there. That's in the area where tight end David Horn was out there blocking. Well, that's a holding call all the way. The official watching it. You can see him immediately holding against Tennessee. That's about the best play that uh, Kentucky has had in its first two drives is that yellow flag. And their secondary guys have had to make a lot of tackles. We've already mentioned Melvin Johnson. Number 25, the senior out of Cincinnati's St. Xavier. George Harris is their number three tackler. And Lehman Boyd, who's out for the season, was also one of those top tacklers in that secondary. They lost Marcus Jenkins from last year, an honorable mention All-American, Willie Cannon, who played the left corner, Don Robinson, who played the right side. And their replacements have been busy. And that might have been a touchdown had the receiver not slipped on the play. That was Marcus Nash, the true freshman. It almost looked as if Nash was trying to stop. Good play action, fake here, strong side play. Now come out weak. Watch this delivery by Manning. Squares up those shoulders. He's got all the mechanics. You'll see Nash's feet slide out from underneath him there, just the tail end of the play, but he was wide open. We had the groundskeeper yesterday tell us he hasn't seen a volunteer slip on this turf yet this year. It finally happened on the 19th of November. Five wide receivers on third and 16. 
Manning, look at that time. Out to the right side. And the ball is thrown out there for number three, Ronnie Pillow. He's listed as the fourth string tailback. And he's got his eighth reception of the year, but they're well short of a first down. And Bob, if you're on the sideline with Bill Curry, you're looking for positive things for your team. This is a very positive note. Tennessee got great field position. They had first down inside the 20. They're going to hold them to at least a field goal try. That's what they need to build on, the positive things that their defense is doing. Now they need to get the offense moving the football. Bexford, 8 for 15 this year. He's only 3 of 6 between 30 and 39 yards, and I'm not sure he got that one. It is wide right. He was working from the right hash, and he simply pushed it straight down the field. He didn't have an angle on it. And it stays Tennessee 7 and Kentucky nothing. We're back after a word from your local SEC station. They missed a field goal. Bill Curry's cats have only run six plays and kicked the football twice. It's a gorgeous day in Knoxville. Don't you love the SEC in November? Oh, you told me it's going to be cold. <laughs> Antonio O'Farrell is the quarterback for Kentucky. And he will give it on first down to Donnell Gordon. This is when they get their second crew in there a bit. Jason Parker on the tackle. Antonio O'Farrell's a 5'10", 180 junior out of New York. He's an option quarterback who's very good, and they like the way he sparks things when he comes in off the bench. Bob, when you look at his rushing average, it's over three and a half yards. You look at Speedy, it's, it's about one and a half yards. So it's a big difference there. That means he's a little bit more mobile as he runs that option play. And he'll go to the shotgun here. He started four games this year. They've been against tough competition. Florida, Auburn, South Carolina, and Indiana. On second down and nine. And a little inside give to Gordon. He fights off one tackler, and he's got a first down. George Kidd tried to get him from behind with the jersey grab and couldn't do it. And the Wildcats finally move the chains for the first time. And Gordon makes a nice play on this because he really gets the ball in the center of the, of the line and it's just kind of crushed around him. And then all of a sudden he finds a seam and gets open and picks up the first down. Ben Talley moved to a down position permanently after the Mississippi State game. Had some turnovers in that game. His first two games, he had 18 tackles and three sacks. He's been a defensive end ever since. First down at the 33. And a problem with the snap. And the ball is recovered, it looks like, by Tennessee. Jonathan Brown was the first man there clawing away at it. I'm not sure he ended up with it, but they love this guy out of Tulsa. He's a true freshman, and they say that someday he will be the man who will replace Ben Talley. Well, anytime you have a missed snap right here, the quarterback's got to get down on the ball. The problem was that Woodford ran into him. He couldn't get down on the football. He got knocked out of the way, and you see the recovery there, giving Tennessee, again, great field position. On the year... 22nd fumble by Kentucky in the 15th time they've lost one. First down at the 30. Brandon Stewart, the backup quarterback for Tennessee, gave it off to Jay Graham that time. And Stewart's another outstanding freshman. He was a high school All-American and the Southwest Player of the Year out of Stephenville, Texas, in the Dallas area last year. And one of the big questions around Knoxville, will both of these young quarterbacks still be on this team next year? Well, that's a that's a tough call because obviously Peyton Manning's got the nod to start, but Brandon Stewart is such a tremendous talent. And they fumble the ball on the snap. It's a rugby scrum in there. We don't know who has the football. Well, right now in possession of it is Jay Graham. We're not sure if he had it when the whistle blew. Looks like Kentucky will, excuse me, Tennessee will keep it. Phil Fulmer told us yesterday he'll go to spring football and make his decision about the quarterback situation. But some folks have said, hey, one of these guys may not be here by spring football. And you know, those quarterbacks pulling out quick on the center, and that, that exchange fumble is so common whenever you change a quarterback because the center gets used to snapping the ball in a certain place where that hand is supposed to be, and it's not. Stewart 24 of 43 throwing this year. He faces a third and 12. And he will give it off to Graham. And he'll 
will get down inside the 25. They had to get to the 20 yard line for a first down. Dante Key on the tackle. And with John Bexford's failure of a moment ago, will they give him another chance? It appears they will. Well, now he knows how to play that wind. He threw up a little piece of grass that uh, it's a little bit of a slight breeze. Yeah, this ball's <laughs> also about eight yards closer to the center of the field. Mark Holland is the snapper. Lance Wheaton is the holder. Bexford, eight of 16 now this year. So this will be about a 39 yarder. And the first quarter comes to a close, so he'll have to kick it when we come back. Tennessee 7, Kentucky nothing. We're back after this message from CarQuest Auto Parts. Today's telecast brought to you in part by Hardee's. Your tailgating headquarters and a proud sponsor of the SEC. Volunteers lead it 7 0 as we go to the second quarter of play. And Bob Kessling, another look in a moment at the kicker of the Vols, John Bexford. You know, John has been in kind of a slump. He uh, was an All American kicker last year, just missed one field goal, and then suddenly this year kind of lost his confidence. Not that he wasn't hitting the ball strongly and firmly, he was. He was just a little bit off angle. He picked up golf two years ago, and now he's got about a six handicap, so he's a natural athlete. John says it's kind of like putting. When you lose your confidence, you just got to keep booting it and hope it goes straight. I think golf has messed a lot of people up. <laughs> well, I don't have a six handicap. I can probably that's messed me up. This will be a 39 yarder. And this one looks absolutely straight. He hit it well. And six seconds into the second quarter, Tennessee leads 10 nothing. So Kentucky will get the football back in a moment. They haven't done much offensively. Bexford with a nice stroke. Ten zip fouls. Done nothing volunteers on the Bexford field goal. Six seconds into the second quarter. Sanford and Rudolph, the deep men for Kentucky. There's a breeze blowing. They're only at their ten. Tennessee's been kicking the ball short against these two. This one very short up at about the 16 for Keo Sanford. He thought he saw something up the middle. It closed on him in a hurry and the Cats will start at their own 29 yard line after a Nick Jester special teams tackle. A look at our Lee Apparel first quarter statistics. Total yardage is the way of the volunteers and to go along with what you can see in that first quarter Kentucky ran only nine plays Tennessee ran 22 and you see no passing yardage they have got to pass the football not long but they've got to pass it if they don't they'll have eight nine men up in that box and they won't be able to run the football either Mo Williams hasn't carried the ball since the first possession he's waiting for a pitch here it never comes and on the corner number seven just dial that when you're in doubt on Tennessee's defense that's Jason Parker and he already has four tackles today. Well two things about that play are tough when a quarterback reverses out the running backs are supposed to get out in front of them but really he reversed out and he was right along with the running backs and just ran along the, uh, the line and ran out of room and lost about two three yards on the play. Second and 13. Tight end lined up on the left side. Whoops. Adam Kane. And there are three flags on the line of scrimmage. Everybody saw that one. Yeah, I think everybody in America saw that Before one. Before the snap, false start, right guard, offense, still second down. They do like this sophomore out of Osceola, Indiana, though. They call him their future up front. And when Dan Carruthers leaves this year, Adam Kane will be the center next year. He's a player of great promise. Well, really important right here that O'Farrell doesn't try to pressure the ball into some type of a coverage and throw up a mistake. Needs to pick up seven, eight yards, get that third down situation and maybe four or five. O'Farrell out of the gun. And there's Mo Williams carrying the ball. Cracked up between a couple of volunteers. And he was cracked right down by Scott Gallion. Gallion has simply moved over recently to where he used to play that right linebacker position. He leads the balls and tackles with 82 coming in a junior out of Seymour. And we talked earlier of Ben Talley's moving back to the defensive line. It was all made possible by the emergence of sophomore Tyrone Hines who's really going to be something in that middle for the next couple of years. On third and ten option right end around fake O'Farrell's in trouble. 
And right there to meet him is the man who backs up Hines, Craig King. We were told that Tyrone Hines has an injury, but King has had most of the playing time at middle linebackers so far. Oh, if he had handed the ball off to Sanford on his fake reverse, watch Sanford come into your picture here. If he hands it off there, you see there was nobody near Sanford. Everybody was going with the play action and went along with the uh, the, at the end around, but oh boy, that reverse, he'd still been running. Nicky Nichols needs to hit a good one here. And he squibs it off to the right side, and it'll bounce straight up. And Tennessee will have the football around their own 49 yard line. Nothing going right for the Cats so far. A 27 yard kick. We'll track some other scores from around the country. A rather abbreviated schedule today. ACC meets SEC. South Carolina needs a win to go to a bowl. Duke a field goal up when they're shooting it out in the ACC early there Syracuse against Maryland and Virginia Tech and the Cavaliers playing a tight one a lot of those natural rivals getting together this weekend and some good running room off the right side for James Stewart by the way for the latest scores of just the game you'd like call the Jefferson pilot score line 1-900-267-5757 Calls are a dollar a minute. Peyton Manning back in there at quarterback for the Volunteers. The National Player of the Year in high school football last year. Out of the eye on second and six, and he gives to the fullback. Mose Phillips breaks a tackle. First down. And he's inside the 35 of Kentucky. Every time I see Mose, we think about that play at South Carolina when he had one of the great runs in Tennessee history too bad they lost the game Yeah, just get outside you, they call them broken tackles but on defense you call them missed tackles and you can't win when you miss tackles Mose Phillips has never rushed for negative yardage this year he's run for about 135 yards after that carry previously and the Volunteers continue to move the football with James Stewart. Little man at 6'1", 218, not very little, has been very busy. Great story how he got the name Little Man, though, isn't it? Yeah, just his father, when he was a youngin', called him Little Man. He turned out to be a pretty big man. Averaging almost six yards a carry today, so you tack on 53, and he's at 2,600 and 79 yards for his career. He's got the deep pitch. Looking to cut it up field. And the Volunteers will move it again to first down territory. Robert Stinson had a shot at him at the line of scrimmage. And again, this tackles are killing. Kentucky, you've got to make those tackles up front. You've got to shed those blocks, get to the tackles. You can't come underneath blocks. That'll get you in big time trouble when you try to come around the back side of a block because you're not standing in front of a ball player and then all you're doing is just trying to grab his jersey as he runs by. Volunteers making it look rather routine at the moment. And Stewart feeling his way through was eventually bumped down. Chad Hudson on an initial hit and then Mike Schlegel put a shoulder pad to him to knock him down. You know Bob Kessling talked about that offensive line of Tennessee and the great pride they have. They're all good. Boy you get up front there when you can make a switch from center to tack uh, to guard and uh, move around on that front line you've got great versatility and this is an offensive lineman's time when you're controlling the line of scrimmage you're blowing them off the line your backs are picking up big yardage every play that's a lineman's dream second down and four and a give off the left side Stewart again first down Tennessee and he's down near the 12 maybe the 11 yard line of the Wildcats Kurt Supi from right end on the tackle and Tennessee's about to make it 17 nothing the way they're moving the football here. Well, Bob, this is where those offensive linemen come out there and they kind of point at the defense and say, hey, we're coming right here. See if you can stop us. An ugly first down stat. Only five minutes into the second quarter from the Kentucky standpoint. And some play action. Manning, left sideline, throws it a little bit too tall. Oh, I should have, there should have been a flag on that play. Well, there is one. Stephen Hall coming in a little bit late. You can't do that. Most Phillips, the intended receiver. No, you can't do that. That ball was way overthrown. 
and the defender came in and just took a shot at him. Mm. Again, watch the ball. It's going to be the left of your screen. It's going to be overthrown. A lot of velocity on the pass here. Now watch. The ball's overthrown. Now the play's over, right? You can't do that right there. Not with an official two yards away. <laughs> That's a frustration hit. That's what you call that. When things aren't going right for you, you try to do something a little bit extra, and you make a mistake like that. But that's a costly mistake. Half the distance, first and goal at the six. Volunteers out of the eye with Phillips and Stewart behind Peyton Manning, and there's Little Man. And he was wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Roger Sullivan did a nice job of coming from the left side to grab him, and then Bill Verdonk playing on the right side was able to finish the playoff. There's number 93, Bill Verdon, just a redshirt freshman out of Lake Forest, Illinois, up in the Chicago area. And there's Hobby. That's their redshirt freshman quarterback, Matt Hobby, out of Sarasota. Earl Dickey told us he would see some time today. Hey, it's time for the Cats to find a few things out. I mean, they're right. one and nine. Second down and goal from the five. Manning to the left side it was almost picked off by Keo Wilson oh I thought Wilson had this ball he came right up inside the defender the receiver pillow and it looked as if he could have taken it off 90 yards or more watch this quick out pattern watch watch him right in the picture gets that hand inside one step earlier and he would have been history for about 94 yards when this is where Manning is so got such talent he's got that great height at 65 he can look downfield nobody gets in his way he can find those wide receivers and, and he's got a bunch of them five of them on third and goal from just outside the five Manning has got some room to run and he's got some room to throw a touchdown and it's Billy Williams on the receiving end and it's nice to see Billy get one he's a great senior out of Alcoa right down the road he's been hurt all year long he told Coach Fulmer, I want the ball eight times Saturday. He just got it for the first time. Right. Good pressure here, but they lose some pocket containment. Now that puts so much pressure on your defensive backs because you've got a quarterback that can either run in or pass in. Credit Manning, he just kind of pulled up short. Bang. First touchdown this year. Here comes Bexford, and he's got another one. Two in a row today, 147 straight. He might catch Carlos Huerta the way this ball game's going. 9.33 before halftime. Billy Williams on the receiving end, and it's 17-0 Tennessee. 17-0 Tennessee, nine and a half before halftime. Bob Carpenter, Dave Rowe, and Bob Kessling from a rather relaxed Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. 95,066 on hand today. Boy, that ball bombed out of there. I think the wind stopped where that ball was kicked. Tom Hutton, the punter, took a swipe at it, and he hit a rocket right out of here. A three-minute, 44-second scoring try for the Volunteers, 51 yards in 10 plays. And Billy Williams capping it up. Now we've got to see if Kentucky can do something offensively. They've never had more than three plays in a drive today. They do have a first down, but that was negated by a fumble. And here's their third string quarterback, Matt Hobby. 5'11", 180 redshirt freshman from Sarasota. On the first play, he will give it off to his back. And that is Donnell Gordon. Donnell seemed to be off balance from the moment he received the football, and he still got big yardage. Yeah, he tripped going to the strong side and actually made a cut while he was falling, coming back to the weak side, just kept on falling. Donnell, a sophomore out of Pee Wee Valley, Kentucky. Wait a minute. Pee Wee Valley? <laughs> well, he's only 5'10". <laughs> There's your average starting field position. Tennessee has been in Kentucky territory on the average every time. First down at the 33. Cats have their second move of the change today. And this time it goes into the belly of the fullback, Michael Woodfork. He's just a sophomore out of that great high school program, Tillman in Paducah. 
and he's getting some playing time because Damon Hood is out with sprained ligaments in his knee. Let's check in with Bob Kessler. Well, the Wildcats really anxious to get into the game is Harold Dennis, a sophomore from Radcliffe, Kentucky. He was involved in that tragic bus crash up in outside Carrollton, Kentucky. He wanted to, he came to Kentucky as a walk-on kicker. Now they put him at wide receiver, and he's going to play in his first college action when Kentucky is on their punt receiving team. What a great story. An inspirational young man, Bill Curry, thinks the world of him. It's amazing that he even has a football uniform on at the moment. Yeah, they said he just he speaks all of, all around the country. He uh, gets opportunities to speak. Talks about uh, you know tr against drunk drivers and things like that. He's just a marvelous uh, person. Second down and six. Gallion's looking like he wants to blitz from that bottom side. And there he comes. Gets cut off as Hobby has a chance to throw it, and the ball was almost picked off by Jesse Sanders. Jesse's the left inside linebacker. He doesn't always get a lot of notoriety because of Scott Gallion and Tyrone Hines and Craig King in there. John Summers, 23, was also there to help out. And Bob, right now, as we look at Hobby, you're looking for a spark. That's what Bill Curry is saying. We need a spark in there on offense. He's tried his first quarterback. Things didn't work out. They only ran nine plays up until this drive. Bill Dickey describes Hobby as having a cannon for a left arm. And he runs a 4 5 40. This time he gives it off to Gordon, and the volunteers say, ah, you can forget it. Five of them there. That play was very slow in developing. Shane Burton was there, Jesse Sanders again. And Kentucky will have to kick it again. Well, slow and developing. It's a front handoff draw, and you can see the back looking for a hole. There is no hole up front. He tries to get outside again for no yardage. But third down and about five, you've got to throw that football up. You've got to take a chance. Nothing to lose. That's exactly right. Nicky Nichols not having a very good day. Now Sean Summers is back. You better get it away in a hurry. He does, and it ends up spiraling low to the 15. Summers cracks it up for about eight yards. Tripped up on the play. It looked like Kyo or Keo Wilson with some help from Mike Schellenberger. 38 yards on the kick and eight on the return. 7-17, first half. From Knoxville, it's all balls. Brandon Stewart is back at the helm of the Volunteers as we get set for another Tennessee possession. 7-17 to go, first half. And Tennessee... They've been pass heavy lately, but today they've been keeping it on the ground against this Kentucky defense that has spent way too much time on the field this year. Aaron Hayden tackled by Bill Verdant, number 93. Coming into this game on first down the last four games, Tennessee had thrown the ball 71% of the time. We were talking with David Cutcliffe yesterday. He had a big, thick computer printout. He says, this answers all the folks who says we're predictable. We just paged through this and said, no, we ran this, we ran this. They had thrown the ball seven of ten times on first down the last four games. Not today. Not when you get nine yards on first down running. Aaron Hayden again. David Ginn, the tackle, a redshirt freshman who backs up Dante Key, and there's a flag. That flag's thrown along the line of scrimmage. And a hold will move the football back a little bit. There's only one senior on that Tennessee offensive front. Bob Kessling, Kevin Mays is one of the best. He sure is, and of course he has come on strong at the end of the year. Many people around here think he's up for all-star considerations. Right now, trying to catch his breath, kind of a uh, groin injury on the last uh, possession, so Mays is out of the game. And also interesting about Melvin Johnson, the outstanding free safety of Kentucky. They put a green jersey on him this week in practice. And they say he's the key player of the defense. They didn't want anybody hitting him. They lost Damon Hood in practice. And so they said, don't let, don't hit Melvin. Let him hit you. He hits a lot of ball carriers. And it takes a while for anybody to hit Aaron Hayden. Taken down by Melvin Johnson after a big gain all the way out to the 38-yard line of Tennessee. Well, the secret to defense is to make him change directions. And you can see he doesn't very much change direction. He's running full speed in the backfield. He doesn't even have to look for a hole. The hole just opens. Again, the, the problems with Kentucky is getting off those blocks. When, they're, when they hit in, they lock up with those offensive linemen. You've got to get rid of them. 4,500 yards between them. That's a couple of miles. 
and there goes Hayden again. Another first down into Kentucky territory. You know, the amazing thing about these guys, they both came in several years ago. They both wanted to carry the football, both thought they would be stars. And then a guy named Charlie Garner showed up out of junior college. And Stewart with Hayden had to take backstage passes for a year or two. <laughs> now they're the guys again and doing very well. And Philip Fulmer's got a very special place in his heart for Hayden. He recruited Aaron when he was an assistant here. Aaron's had some tough times, but he stuck with it. He's having a great senior year. And that one completed out on the near side. Who's going to make a tackle? It's Nilo Sylvan. And Hiles had to recover on the play. He got a great hit, but you've got to wrap him up. When you hit in there, you just don't throw your body in there. You got to wrap those arms around it. I've heard that since I was in midget football. Wrap them up. And it's been a while, folks, since Dave Rowe was in midget football. There's Mike Archer, the ex head coach at LSU, a Miami guy. It's got to be a tough year for him. His team's given up 448 yards a game total defense. I talked with him before the game a little bit. He's got a real good attitude about it. He said you let us get one year of maturity and you watch how we're going to play. We're going to play a lot stronger. Second down and ten. A little look in pattern. Problem was when Joey Kent looked the ball had booked. It was way behind him. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. I have to tell you a quick story about Mike Archer. He was I made a commercial one time stamp collecting and Mike Archer was the quarterback. He was an assistant at Miami just a grad assistant. And how many times oh. did you have to sack him that day. I sacked him about 70 times. He said I didn't know what they wanted. But he said I know I could have missed. I could have missed you one time. Hey there's Dante Key again his second pass deflection of the day and his seventh of the year that one hung up for a while and the cats just couldn't reach it. That would have been an easy six. If Kurt Soupy or one of his teammates would have been able to get there. I can't think of anything worse than being sacked 70 times oh, in one day. It was amazing. He had to stand back there with the ball and act like a quarterback. And I would just run down his throat and they said, you know what Dave Rowe does for fun? He collects stamps. He collects right quarterbacks. <laughs> yeah. Mike Archer said, boy, I couldn't believe it. They said $300 for that commercial. That was like a million. Well, that's a coverage man that'll get flagged. He didn't give much room at all for Keo Sanford to catch that ball. Eric Lane was just about mouthpiece to mouse, mouthpiece with him. 35 yards on a high hanging kick by Tom Hutton. A good, good, uh, you know, just good concentration looking that ball all the way in when you've got somebody running down your throat and you think you're going to get that opportunity to catch it. Really important now for Kentucky to get something going on offense. Well, it's 17 nothing. Violation of the two yard belt on the kicking team. Five yard penalty. First down. Now, the two yard rule is you have to give two yards between the receiver of the football and the defender coming down. And you can see that that rule was violated. I don't think there were two feet in there. <laughs> Bill Curry, tough season. It's been tough for his wife, Carolyn. She's, she said hey we can't walk away from this just because somebody makes a phone call like they did his family and her family gave him support and he says he will be back for 95 4 29 to go the cats down by 17 for us at halftime well coming up at halftime we'll check on our SEC player of the week the outstanding quarterback of the Alabama Crimson Tide they got a big game today too at the Iron Bowl also we'll be checking on an outstanding player for the Tennessee Volunteers a guy going for a record today and plus keep you up to date on all the scores and highlights around the country that's all coming up at halftime I guess that means he's going to be talking about little man Stewart <laughs> if you picked up that little cue from our crew 429 to go and the cats back out there at their own 16 yard line Matt Hobby the redshirt freshman with another series and let's see if they put the ball in the air at all. I want to see his arm if he has a rocket out there. Let's see that thing take off. And off second man through and a big hole up over the 30 yard line and it's Ray McLaurin who's the starting wing back. Good block up front there. 
That's his biggest run of the year. He'd only run the ball five times for 17 yards previously. Good, good block there by Davis, 82. Misdirection play. What you do is you start off one way, and the back comes against the grain, and the hole just opened right up. 15 yards on the play. Hobby to the fullback, Woodfork. He was plugged up in a hurry. See, I think White was right there. I think, Bob, you've got to pass on first down. You've got to open it up a little bit. You see Tennessee starting to creep up into the box. Those players are starting to come up there farther and farther because they're not run, they're not passing the football. Now that's predictable. <laughs> 18 rushes, one pass, and it was an incompletion. Got to throw the football. That keeps your defense honest. Second down and ten. Two backs in the eye as they look strong side right. They will run that way, and they'll give it this time on the reverse. Can he ever get possession? Keo Sanford finally did. Well, they must have been thinking along your lines, Dave. They knew last time that play was wide open yeah. for Keo, so this time they gave it to him. Yeah, but when sort you, of. Yeah, but when you run it the first time, you catch the defense off guard. When you run it the second time, and watch this, he doesn't hand it off. He throws it out there, bounces it off his chest. He dribbles it two or three times here. Amazing the way the ball bounced back up to him. That could have been another disastrous play. I'll tell you what, Rick Pitino would have been impressed with that dribble. <laughs> Third down in 20 as they went way backwards that time. Boy, and this is tough for a young quarterback because a lot of times you have the tendency to try to force it into coverage. Four wide receivers. And Hoppy with a two-step drop. He's got great speed. He ran into a blocker. And now he'll be down out of bounds around the 22-yard line. He ran right into Aaron Purdy. It was pass blocking. It looked like, Dave, to me, the young quarterback panicked a bit and made a quick decision to run. Absolutely. I don't think he was going to pass this at all. See how quickly he starts to run? Now looks for the hole to go open. He had no idea to pass this football. Tennessee calls a timeout to stop the clock with 2.16 remaining. We're about to get the football back with a fourth and 19 coming up. And with that last snap on that last punt that they saw Kentucky have, I'm sure they're going to say to themselves, hey, we can maybe block one. So they'll really be coming after him. Now, this is a Kentucky team that as recently as last year went to a bowl game. They lost to Clemson 14-13 in the Peach, ended up 6-6. Six and six. That SEC wins at South Carolina against Ole Miss at home at Mississippi State against LSU. Also beat Kent and East Carolina. So Kentucky gets set to kick it again and Tennessee will have great field position. Sean Summers is back there. You got 10 men up on the line. They're coming after it. Nicky Nichols with some pressure here. Good snap. Got it away, and that's a good looking punt. Back to the 25 yard line. Who's going to cover it? Summers on the near side, and he'll be cracked out of bounds. The midfield strike 53 on the kick 24 of it right back on the return. Let's check in with Bob Kessling downstairs. One of the key members of the Wildcats on crutches Damon Hood. Damon tell us about the injury first. How'd you hurt? It? Oh I got hurt on PT field goal you know trying to lean out trying to buck outside guy and somebody fell on my knee you know it's unfortunate you know last game of the season so. And it's not the way this kind of sets the tone for the entire season I guess the way it's gone. I mean, for you guys. Season of bad luck you know had some injuries you know had death in the off season so I mean Things ain't going that way this year. How about your future? You still want to play next year someplace? I would love to play, you know, but right now I got you know get my knee, you know, together, you know, hopefully work out with somebody, you know, in December. Damon, listen, uh, sorry about the injury. Congratulations on a great career and hope you play somewhere next year. Yeah, I hope. Thank you. <laughs> on the end of round, it's Nilo Silvan on the carry. By the way, a footnote on Damon Hood, a former Mr. Football out of Warren Central High School in Bowling Green. He will finish number 20 on the all-time Kentucky chart with 1144 yards. Very articulate young man. Thanks to him for the visit. Peyton Manning's the quarterback and they just went for eight yards on first down. And here they go for a first down with James Stewart to the near side. He continues to inch closer and closer to Johnny Jones. On that all time list coming in he needed 227 yards to catch the number one all time ball rusher. 
Well, when he turns up, you see he gets hit, but he just keeps on kind of grinding in there, falls forward. It's one of those backs you just never bend over backwards and get him for a loss. Manning looking to pass, just got it away. Moses Phillips has the screen. He's got some room in front of him. And he's out of bounds at the 12. Melvin Johnson on the tackle. A 23-yard call and a nice play by the Volunteers. Well, Manning has to hold this ball for the longest time. He's getting pressure, but this is what makes a, a screen go. It's when the quarterback draws the defense, and you see Manning go down here. He held the ball to the last second. Now, you got those big offensive linemen out in front of you. Look how far downfield they are. And Phillips just turns it up and gets that first down inside the 15. First down at the 12, a minute 13 before halftime. Most Phillips in a slot. Stewart behind the quarterback. He'll block. And a quick pattern. But never getting out there was Billy Williams. Well, that's the only angle that Manning has where the sun is in his face. And obviously, that is a miscommunication on a pattern because Manning was thinking of a quick out pattern and the receiver turned inside. Leslie Ratliff, Bubba Miller, Jeff Smith, Kevin Mays, Jason Lehman, that outstanding front for the Vols. Getting ready for some more trench action on second and ten. A minute nine to go. Manning looking left all the way, and he rifles it to James Stewart. I think James wanted to get out of bounds, but he never could keep his feet after catching the ball. And the clock runs under a minute. Unless they call a timeout with exactly 60 seconds to go. And that's what they'll do. And Bob, you know, you talked about how he had that computer printout of all the plays they've run. Teams most times scout themselves as much as they do an opponent. They want to make sure that they don't have any tendencies on first and second down. If they come out first down and seven, say, or second down, say seven to ten yards. They want to make sure that they mix the football up, and that's what Tennessee has done very I, well. I thought the reason they did that was for all those callers on the radio shows who always <laughs> call up and say, "Coach, you're predictable." Yeah, right. <laughs> Third down and eight coming up, and let's check in once more with Bob. You know, Bob, the Neyland Stadium's got a beautiful look to it. The grass has just really added a lot. They had artificial turf here since 1968. So they decided because of recruiting and other things and players like to play on natural turf they took it up in May and then they reseeded with grass in fact they sprigged the field and now it's one of the best playing surfaces in the entire country and of course now also at the end of this game they'll be starting a new addition to the north end zone here at Neyland Stadium so they're sprucing things up and this really is a show place in college football right now. Yeah those orange seats on top will bring the capacity here to 100,000. You know, I heard a rumor that they were thinking about bringing some turf in from Georgia, and cooler heads prevailed. They said there's no way Georgia grass is going to be on a Tennessee field. Well, it probably wouldn't grow. <laughs> <laughs> so they had it right here from the state of Tennessee. They're down. They have to get down to the two for a first down. Manning in trouble. Escapes. Looking right side. He can run it. He can score. Peyton Manning with his first running touchdown of the year, his longest run of the year. The previous one he'd gone was three, and he takes it in for the score. Well, that's what happens when you lose containment on a quarterback. He's not known as a runner. Well, hard to believe he was playing high school football last year. Expert. You know, that's close to a miss for him. Anytime it's not right down the middle. <laughs> and John's got another one. Manning getting the ball down the field in a hurry. Good two minute drill. It took him a minute 12 to get it down and score. Now watch the pressure come up the middle and to his left. Now brings the ball down. Nobody on the right side. No pressure on the right side. No one's going to catch him out there. You're not going to run one of those big defensive linemen. You're not going to run him down. Again, Manning sitting there, pressure in his face, but they lose containment on the right side. He scrambles out. Nobody comes up to turn him back in, and he just takes it all the way into the end zone. Fifty seconds to go. 
And it's 24 nothing. And Bob, you know, as I look at him, of course, you you know his dad, Archie Manning, the great quarterback with the Saints for all those years. But he's a different type of quarterback. This kid is six foot five. Archie's uh, Archie was more of a scrambler, running all over the red hair, flowing in the in the breeze. But this kid's got great mechanics. Fifty yards on six plays, and then the kick into the end zone, and Keo Sanford will come out with it. He's got some room on the near side. Over the 35, makes his cut up field. And he's out of bounds into the Kentucky bench at the 46. Keogh was saying, get out of my way. <laughs> there was a lane there, and he saw it. Took off, just exploded. Now he took the ball about three yards deep in the end zone. Now he sees it. Now look, get out of my way. I see a seam. This has got to be the best field position that Kentucky's had all day. That was Tom Hutton, the kicker, putting him into his own bench. And the Cats have all their timeouts remaining. 40 seconds to go. Four wide receivers. Jeff Speedy is back in. They want his experience to see if they can score here. He will drop and wait and throw. I don't know if somebody got his arm or tipped the ball, but that thing was diving into the turf. What you want to do in this position is get field position so at least you can get a positive note to go in and a field goal try. He's got to make a lot of yardage though. That's all. One in the slot, one with the quarterback and four wide receivers on second and ten. Smith with the catch. Leon's a great story. This week the CFA named him to their all good works team. He's a guy very active in the community in Lexington especially with the youth. There's 11 of those players in the nation. Leon's on the team. And how about a guy who's a wide receiver who's the deep snapper on punts when he's healthy. He's just coming off a sprained knee. Great story. I think that's the first completion for Kentucky and you think right that's his 27th time. catch of the year and a timeout called 26 seconds to go Kentucky stopping it hey Bob where is Smokey well that's the problem today Smokey the usual blue tick town mascot of Tennessee the actual dog is not here he has been suspended for unsportsmanlike conduct for the game <laughs> apparently uh, you know they usually like to take a bite out of the other team well apparently he's taking some bites out of several people so they've retired Smokey seven they've got Smokey the pup number eight grooming from next year in fact he was born the day of the Tennessee Florida game this year so Smokey eight will be back in action next year but no Smokey today or next week against Vanderbilt I knew that new fighting rule would get somebody <laughs> third down at eight drop steps up he's got room to the left side hit from behind great pursuit by Ben Talley they need another timeout quick stop the clock and it'll come with 16 seconds to go I saw that smoky eight down on the field if he grows into those feet he's going to be a huge dog <laughs> Again, pressure on the quarterback. They know it's a passing situation. Speedy steps up in the pocket, avoids the rush now. Try to pick up. They need to make it to about the 30-yard line to have a good field goal try. They've got one timeout remaining now. 0 for 6 on third down today. Each team can stop it one more time. If they can make it to a 30-yard line, that's about a 47, 48-yard field goal. That's the range that their field goal kicker has. Bill Curry just took the headset and he's talking to Daryl Dickey the offensive coordinator at Tennessee boy who's upstairs. Well, you've got plenty of time to run at least two plays if you're able to move the chains that stops the clock so then you don't that makes actually like a timeout then they have one timeout remaining so they've got enough time they've got enough time to get to the 30 yard line they have to find some plays to get to the 30 yard line. Homer and Curry well, I'm taking over for Johnny Majors about this time well, a little before this three years ago and Bill Curry of course the well publicized move from Alabama to Kentucky 
One 26 ball games out of 36 with three bowls in Tuscaloosa. But a big task ahead. And you know, this is a fourth and two. They have to think first down first. They've got to make the first down. Speedy. With a short toss. Scott Gallion is there to intercept it. And that is the first of his career. He likes it at that old right linebacker position. Boy, Gallion made an excellent play on this. He knew they were going to come just trying to make the first down. He planted, and as Speedy delivered the ball in there, he just planted, came right back, reacted right in front of the receiver, and took the ball away from Sanford. 11 seconds to go. And look out here. Manning certainly has the arm to throw it a long way. All the receivers can't ex exactly decide where they're lining up, but they are in the pattern somewhere. Manning waiting. Two flags in the play. Look at that arm strength. Look at that move. Joey Kent down to the 26. Two seconds on the clock, but there are flags. Now the question is, is it against the offense or defense? If it's a defensive play, a penalty, the play will stand, and they'll try a field goal. But I think it's, if it is, it's illegal procedure against Tennessee. It's going to negate that long completion. But Dave, did you see that throw from Peyton Manning? Yeah, let's take another look at it. Right over the middle. Watch Manning. Not under any pressure. Sees the crossing pattern right there and delivers a rope. Cool. Illegal position on the offense. Six men on the line of scrimmage. Clock start on the line play. Well, you talked about the confusion, and that's what happened. They didn't have seven men up on the front line of scrimmage. One more play. Well, now they let the clock go ahead and run out. First half is over. In the first half, Tennessee runs 49 plays. Kentucky runs 26. They only get a couple of first downs. They have a couple of turnovers. And last year when these two got together, it was 48 to nothing. Tennessee beating Kentucky. 24 nothing here. Let's check in with Bob. Coach, give us your thoughts on the first half. Well, I'm pleased with the, uh, the lead, obviously, and I think we've run the football very, very well. I, we're stopping ourselves too much, and that's discouraging. But your offensive line came out, set the tone on that first possession. Tempo up front early. We hope to do that, and we're able to do that. Our running backs in line have played extremely well. Coach, thanks a lot. Good luck, second half. Philip Fulmer going to the locker room with a 24 0 lead over the Kentucky Wildcats. 24 0 Tennessee leads Kentucky as we get ready for the second half here in Knoxville. And the Volunteers have some things at stake as well. Final home game for 18 seniors. Most feel that after a season, most of the time when the SEC's had only three teams in the top 25, Mississippi State is now broken in. They don't play today, so they'll probably stay. Tennessee at six and four, maybe at seven and four, surely would become a top 25 team. And of course, there's the bowl picture. There are prospects of the Gator Bowl, maybe for this team, not Kentucky, but for Tennessee, it'll be next year or Bill Curry and company. They've got a lot of rebuilding to do. Of course, the SEC championship game winner goes to the Sugar Bowl. The second best team, the loser of that game, will go to the Citrus and play the runner up from the Big Ten. It could be Tennessee and the Gator against one of those second tier teams from the Bowl Coalition. And the SEC fourth and fifth place teams get very good bowls as well, the Peach and the Carquest, against respectively the ACC and the Big East. Tennessee went to the Citrus last year and lost to Dave Rose Penn State <laughs> Nittany Lions 31 13 looking for another good bowl this season and they will get the football to start things off Kentucky will kick it off I think Kentucky's the only team I've seen that when they win that coin toss they do not defer everybody defers to the second half but they wanted the ball to start the game Brian Savinsky with the kickoff Sean Summers at his own two. Now it's Nilo Silvin. And he's got some room up the middle. And he'll jitterbug about to the 28 yard line. And that's where the Volunteers will start. They'll give him 27 on the return. Peyton Manning back to work. Just above 50% for 63 yards in the first half. He's throwing at a 61% clip this year. He's thrown for seven touchdowns. 
has had five picked off and make it eight touchdowns with the pass today to Billy Williams. And Bob I talked with his dad up up in the uh, press box at halftime really interesting he said the hardest decision was to allow Peyton to make his own choice. He said my name's not real good in Mississippi right now. <laughs> there are some other things not good in Mississippi at the moment. Manning out to the wing and Joey Kent the sophomore out of Huntsville Alabama has it. Joey Kent's going to be a big time player here. Came in leading the Vols in catches with 32, averaging about 13 yards a catch. A good downfield threat, and he's just a second-year player. Boy, and you love to see that pass because he has great speed. They throw it out to him quick, let him go one-on-one -on -one with that cornerback, and he can make a miss a lot of times. Manning with a throw to the near side for Nilo Silvan. They tried to isolate him out there on the corner. And he was able to break a tackle of George Harris before a couple of pursuing teammates caught up. David Snarden was one of them. But that's the play when they get Nylon out there, Nilo out there, and try to get him one on one with the corner. And hopefully the other guys have taken the safeties elsewhere. Boy, and that's a that's a threat when you've got Kent on one side and you've got him on the other side. Uh, that's tough to defend. Now they come back with the running plays. Yeah, second and one. Oh, heck, we'll try it again. Nilo to the other side. Same guy has got him this time, George Harris. He wasn't about to let him get away again. Nilo a little off balance when he caught that ball. They even lost a yard. It'll be third and two. And now you've got to think run. If you're a defensive player, it's almost as if you want to just challenge him. Come up in that box, say, hey, it's third down at about two yards. We're at least going to stop the run. If you don't stop the run, the pass ain't going to hurt you here. Two tight ends, David Horn and Scott Pfeiffer. Look at them all up in that box. Stewart. And he looks like he got the shoulder pads, the helmet, and the ball beyond first down yardage into Kentucky territory. Well, Kentucky gambled that time. They said, hey, you are going to run. And they had 11 guys in what we call the tackle box. That's from tackle to tackle. Every player on Kentucky's team was up in that box. Good average for little man today came in at 5.8 his 85 yards a game is fourth best in the SEC. He's 153 yards away from Johnny Jones. And he ran right into Kevin Mays. Now Kevin's quick but James was a little quicker that time. And that, you have to take a little bit more time when you have a switch block like that where the center blocks back and the guard kind of pulls through the hole. You see the little switch right there. You see Mays coming to your picture and he just runs right into the back of him. A lot of folks thought Kevin Mays would have turned out to be a great defensive lineman had he not hurt a knee. And you remember Bob Kessling talked about a groin pull and he comes out and sits down. Second down and 10. Stewart outside then upfield. First down made his cut right at the perfect time left corner Stephen Hall had to make the stop we asked Philip yesterday about trying to get little man Stewart the record he said well you know we've got to win the ball game I think he's fairly yeah. certain at this point he's going to win the ball game so Philip's going to give the ball to Stewart quite a bit well he's got hundred and forty two yards to go. comes an audible along the line and that play was stopped up pretty well by Robert Stinson 94. Well I'll tell you it's tough to go through a season one and nine with all the hopes that Kentucky had after beating Louisville in that first game and then to come in the rest of the season everything go wrong and Bill Bill Curry though I want to tell you yesterday Bob as I, I sat and listened to him as he talked to his team he didn't talk it down. He talked them all up. He said, listen, we can do whatever we make our minds up to. He said, I believe you're going to play well. I believe we've even got a chance to win. Second and ten. Some play action. Manning up top, left side. Touchdown, Tennessee. And it's Joey Kent again. Great play action by Peyton Manning. Froze the secondary. 
And Joey Kendall is wide open. 38 yards. You can't throw the ball any better than this. Look at the line protection up front. No time. Look at that. Just the great mechanics. And watch this. He never breaks stride. Safety never came over. He was playing the, the run pass action inside the little run fake. And Manning just delivered a strike right on stride. Yeah, the old offensive lineman likes plays like that. Next for strokes another one. And it's 31-0. Tennessee, there's a flag on the play. Joey Kent with his fourth touchdown catch of the year. You know, that was his longest catch of the season right there. His previous long, 31 at Mississippi State. That one covered 38 yards. Get a good look at that young man. He's going to be creating headaches for opposing defensive coaches for quite a while in this league. And so's that young guy, too. 18 to go in the third quarter, and the Vols have struck quickly. Joey Kent, a 38-yard rocket from Peyton Manning. And it's 31-0 as that Kentucky defense tries to catch its breath. They've been on the field quite a bit today. Earlier, it was the Tennessee run. And now the ball finding the end zone through the air. There was a penalty on the extra point play, and Tom Hutton <laughs> rifles one out of there. Dave up in the booth with us, a guy who used to be known as Archie Manning. Now he's known as Peyton's dad. <laughs> he certainly is known as Peyton's dad. Archie, great to have you with us. Thanks, Bob. Glad to be with you. You should have gotten here about five seconds ago. Did you see that throw? I was watching. <laughs> okay. I was watching. What you think of the mechanics on that through it? Well, well that's, it got in the end zone. It's, everything's satisfactory. Now, you were a scrambling quarterback. You remember those days back with the old uh, hair flowing and all over the place? <laughs> I didn't want to be a scrambling quarterback <laughs> the day, but uh, it was uh, necessary at times. Well, he certainly was. Brandon's got, I mean, he's, Peyton's got just tremendous mechanics, doesn't he? Well, thank you. Uh, you know, he, he, he works at it. He has worked at it. He, he enjoys it a great deal. So, uh, you know, we're, we're very proud of him. Well, a lot of, uh, a lot of early... Um, Hype in that with him being the national player of the year in high school to obviously go to Mississippi. That must have been a tough decision for you to let him make his own choice. Is that what I understand? Well, I don't think as a parent that's a tough decision. I think uh, it, it, you, you got to let your children make decisions like that. It, it was a tough decision for Peyton, and he obviously has a lot of ties there, and it's a wonderful place. And he just didn't think that was best for him, all everything considered. And so obviously Olivia and I uh, wanted to support his decision, which we did. Matt Hobby, the young quarterback of Kentucky in there, and running off the right side is their fine young halfback, the sophomore Mo Williams. Well, let me ask you a quick question, Archie. Back when we were playing college football, you didn't have to worry about coming out early. What do you think about uh, Peyton in this situation? Uh, that's, we're certainly not going to talk about that. Peyton and I, who we're very close. Obviously, we've had a lot of conversations about uh, different things. We've never even discussed professional Good. football uh, you know he was just just a couple months no. ago he was playing in a, in a small high school there in New Orleans and now he's out there in this massive <laughs> place but that's something uh, I, I think the college experience is, is a great experience and I, I want him to get the, the whole experience that's wonderful second down and seven as Hobby works out of the eye and some play action he's got a great arm but he's not going to get anything away as the volunteers are all over him. Archie, before we let you go, one more question. Who throws the ball harder, you or your son? Uh, he, he can throw better than me. And he, and he, he doesn't throw sidearm either like I did. He, look, he looks better doing it right there. He, does. he has great mechanics. He throws way over top. You remember, you were under all that pressure when you had to run. Archie, I, we, we really appreciate you coming up here and being a part of our telecast. And we look forward to... Uh, Peyton being out there for a lot of years and uh, leading a great Tennessee team. Well, thank you very much, Dave. I enjoyed being with y'all. Y'all do a great job. Do you still yell, go Saints? Oh, yeah. Every, every <laughs> Sunday. Every Sunday, we're fighting with the Saints. That's Archie Manning. Third and 13. That's the nicest Dave Rose has been to a quarterback in a long time. And the ball is tipped and intercepted a midfield. It's Craig King with the pick. And Tennessee has the ball back. Tennessee's eighth INT of the year, and they've got two of them today. Boy, when you tip that ball at the line of scrimmage and that ball goes up, what you want your defensive backs is to react quickly. You see the trajectory of the ball, the way it's, the way it's tipped. That slows the ball down. They yell, fire, fire, and everybody gets to the ball in a hurry. Again, the ball just kind of gets tipped right there. You see the trajectory is off. Fire, fire, and all those defensive backs are running to the football, knowing it's up for grabs. Volunteers back to work after the big play by King. Brandon Stewart, the quarterback. 
and he steps up flushed out to the left side and he was tripped up initially by Robert Stinson and then Howard Carter closed on him to finish off the play. Bob, I really thought that was an interesting uh, comment by Archie about uh, his son you know not having put a lot of pressure on him. Obviously he's got great talent and he looks as if he's going to be a great professional prospect but uh, let him enjoy college. I'm just glad to see quarterbacks are now speaking to you again partner. <laughs> well we used to take those quarterbacks and make a wish you know grab each <laughs> leg and make a wish. Second down and eight out of a single back set with most Phillips a slot to the left. Aaron Hayden follows his block and he's down across the 30 very close to another Tennessee first down. Next Saturday we're heading for Nashville to close out our 13 weeks of SEC football. It's the Battle of Tennessee with the Volunteers and the Commodores. We're on the air at 1230 Eastern Time, 1130 Central Time from Enderville Stadium next Saturday. That'll wrap up our SEC coverage for 1994. And the Volunteers, it appears, will be heading for 7-4 and four that day. Vanderbilt has a tough home game today hosting the Gators of Florida. I was trying to get my Dave Rowe fan club to go to Vanderbilt next week but uh, they say they're not going they're going to watch it on TV. Well they could take a VW to that game. <laughs> <laughs> well there's four of them. I mean hey. <laughs> First down at the 29. Clock runs with less than 825 to go third quarter. Stewart talking to Moe Phillips and Aaron Hayden. Quick drop. Quick look and out to the left side. A quick pass and a quick hit. Well, you have to respect that speed at wide out. So the cushion at the defensive corner keeps back off him is about five to seven yards. He runs about four yards, turns around, bam, the ball's there, and the defense back's got to come up and make a tackle. If you come up too soon, it's the old turn and go long. Keo Wilson on the hit, and that reception was Andy McCullough. He's one of those outstanding freshman receivers. He's out of Dayton, Ohio. That was just his second catch of the year. They've got Marcus Nash, Courtney Epps, Maurice Staley, and then this one down inside the 15-yard line. That is Andy McCullough again. So he catches one pass all year against the Florida Gators. Now he's got one and then a 12 yard reception. Watch all the people on the line. Nobody in the secondary just dumps it over his head. Safety's got to come up. Don't miss the tackle. Almost got a face mask on the play. McCullough goes 6 4 2 10. He's also going to play a little hoops. 6 4 2 10. That's a pretty good uh, small to power forward combination. And the roll from Stewart looking to run. Cuts it upfield. And he runs into a wall at about the seven yard line by the name of Mike Schlegel. At 6'2, 210, the quarterback running into a 6'5, 251 left tackle. Tennessee's got some good young receivers. We talked earlier that Joey Kent's only a sophomore. And look at these guys. Those are their high school numbers. Maurice Staley out of Charlotte, McCullough out of Dayton, and Nash out of Tulsa. 36 touchdowns between them. And into the end zone goes Aaron Hayden again. Eight yards on that one, and the balls are back into the checkered end zone here at Nealon Stadium. His second rushing touchdown of the day and the season. This is just power football right up the middle. Find that little seam, get to the line, put that head down, and burst into the end zone. And boy, you have to credit that big offensive line. As Bob Kessling said, they set the tone early. They are, they are continuing to set the tone. Stewart's getting the yardage. Hayden's getting the touchdowns today. And Bexford keeps getting the extra points. He's got five of them today. And he's got 150 straight. Total domination by the Vowels. 38 zip. Back after a word from your local stations. Harold Dennis sort of feels like the Maytag repairman at the moment. <laughs> Loneliest guy in town waiting for another Tennessee punt. There's only been one all day long. Yeah, Hope Bill, we see him. Well, Bill Curry told us that he would be in the second time they punted. They've only had to do it once. Last two Kentucky possessions, interceptions leading to touchdowns. Cats about to get it back with 6.32 remaining third quarter. The 
and it's Keo Sanford at the goal line, back into the end zone, and right back out, and right down around the 12-yard line. Before he gains on the tackle, there's a flag at the 16-yard line. Oh, was that flag late? A painful season for the Wildcats. Some 16 seniors playing for the final time today. On run back, blocking the back, on the return team, half the distance, find the ball, first down. You know, Bill Curry told us something yesterday that was really something that made you stop and think. He said his kids are being told on a consistent basis by media, by fans, by friends, that they're not SEC caliber players. He said along with the losing and the stats and the numbers and all that, the fact that his kids are being told that by so many people, I think has hurt them as much this year as anything, including the one and nine. It's got to be tough when people don't consider you on the right level to be playing where you are. First man through is the fullback, Michael Woodford. So there's a lot of work to do in Lexington. But I'll say one thing for the Kentucky program, Dave. If you're a coach and you're having problems, and you have C.M. Newton as your athletic director, things could be a lot worse. That is one of the classiest gentlemen in all of college athletics. And so far, C.M. has stood behind his man 100%. And he's uh, to be saluted for that. Some ADs would not make that commitment. Second down and six. And a flat. I think they caught the left guard moving. Before the snap, movement in the line, on the offense, half the distance, still second down. You know, you talk about uh, support of a coach. It's awfully hard to go one and nine, going, going into a season, go one and ten. If you don't lose your focus, there's a lot more to life than just winning football games. And uh, Bill Curry's certainly a winner. I played against him. I remember in pro football, he was a winner there. He's been a winner wherever he's gone. He can turn this program around. Don't take a little bit of time, but uh, if they have confidence in him, he teaches the proper things about football, puts it in that proper perspective. On second down at 11, Raymond McLaurin with the carry. The second carry of the day, and Billy Barron. And there's some rough stuff downfield. Looks like a pair of 57s are dueling. Leland Taylor of Tennessee, Dan Carruthers, the center. For Kentucky got into it downfield. Now the fighting rule is the big one of the big changes in college football this year. If you fight in the second half, you're out the second half plus the next game. Well, Carruthers, obviously a senior, there's nothing ahead for Kentucky. Leland Taylor just a sophomore for Tennessee, and they've got a game next week at Vanderbilt. There's a personal foul against Kentucky and personal foul against. Tennessee so it's offsetting penalties Maybe we can take a peek at this at the tail end there you are on the top of your screen that's just kind of blocking them off the line oh that's just that's just hand checking that's a yeah, little push oh, oh. <laughs> a little personal fall on the offense personal fall on the defense ejection for each team by rule an automatic first foul so they're both out Carruthers and Taylor. That was Barry Jones you saw coming in for a little late activity there. And he didn't get whistled for anything. So there goes Leland Taylor, who's the starting right tackle for Tennessee. His backup's a couple of redshirt freshmen, Trey Teague and Bill Duff. And there's Carruthers who leaves, and his backup is DeAnthony Honaker for Kentucky. And think of that rule now. Taylor, if, if I understand that rule correctly, Taylor will not be able to play in next week's game. At Vandy. Well, the first half, I should say, he will not be able to play. Third down and seven. Now we just heard automatic first down from the official, so it's first down with the ball at about the nine. Oh, and finally the crowd gets a little bit into it. with an option right to the short side of the field. There's just nowhere to go over there. And the primary reason is number seven, Jason Taylor, with his seventh tackle today. Well, it looks like the Gamecocks are looking good for a bowl game, doesn't it? 24-7. Carolina and Duke having quite a shootout in the ACC. Syracuse and Maryland. Big Eastern ACC there, and the Cavaliers on top. Ohio State 
Some feel John Cooper has to win that game to save his job today. Penn State all over Northwestern at the half. And the Commodores are hanging tough early against the Gators. Second down and eight. Trying to feel his way through there and get in some decent yardage is Donnell Gordon. Gordon guys. At least they get up to the uh, close to that first down marker. They've got now they've got the run pass option. They're going to be about third down about maybe two yards to go. They've got a little bit of an option that they can throw here. They bring in uh, some wide outs so that's surprising. Third down and two. Quarterback has to go over and tell the tight end, no, you're on the other side. Chris Davis over to the right side. Look at Tennessee creep up there. Oh, what a hit. Craig King, the first man there. Michael Woodford looked up, and all he saw was two big number fours coming at him. Boy, right in his nose. Bam. You talk about a smash mouth football. That smash mouth. They creeped up a little bit. They got in the box. Watch when he gets this football. Bam. Ooh. That's head to head contact. Wow. Ray King, a sophomore out of that gorgeous town, Asheville, North Carolina, up there in the mountains. That was a majestic hit. Here's Nikki Nichols. Strokes this one well. Back to the 40 yard line. Sean Summers, room to the near side, tiptoeing his way. And he went out of bounds back at the 39. And Bob, on that play, they try to reverse, and it really faked out the coverage team. They bid on the reverse. They saw the action. You'll see when he catches the football. Look at the reverse action right there. You see people running right towards the, uh, the fake. 44 on the kick, 18 on the return. 3.37 to go, third quarter. 38, nothing. They love Fulmer's team in total control. 38 nothing. They've run it well. They passed it well, and they're throwing a shutout. And Bill Curry just looking for some way to motivate his troops. First down at the 39 after the good punt return. Brandon Stewart at the controls. James Littleman Stewart trying to get outside. Rob Manchester had a shot at him. And he kept on going. And with one of the great gentlemen in all of athletics, here's Bob Kessler. You got that right, Bob. A great gentleman. Sam Newton, your football team has had one of the just almost terrific or terrible seasons in, in history. Can you talk about the future of this Kentucky program? Well, you know, this, this year has been one of those crazy years that you just hope you never have. I've got a lot of confidence in our coaches and our young athletes, and, uh, and I think we'll get the thing straightened out. We're certainly going to hang in there with them and give them the support they need to do it. You've been a coach, so you know the ups and downs of this. Is it a situation where you can kind of empathize a little bit with Coach Curry? Oh, I can empathize totally with our coaches and players. I've been through it. Uh, there's nothing more difficult than to build a program. And, uh, you know, we thought we had the thing just about turned after last year. Uh, for whatever reasons, we've taken some real steps back this year. But I'm still satisfied that we got the right combination of people in place to make it happen. I guess that is also a vote of confidence for Coach Curry is what he needs now to make sure the recruiting process continues. Well, you know, I'm not so sure it's a vote of confidence as much as it is just doing what is really what you think you have to do for this program. Now, we could put a Band-Aid on it and, and make a change, but uh, I don't see where that would make any difference. I think that the thing we've got to do is, is hang tough, and we're a lot closer than, than I think a lot of people think we are, and, and hopefully we'll make that turn back next year. Sam, thanks for your time. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Sam Newton, the athletics director at the University of Kentucky. Former basketball coach at Vanderbilt. His career ended very unfairly. In the NCAA tournament one year, he had to play Notre Dame on St. Patrick's Day. That is not fair. <laughs> Second down and one. Stewart. And inside the five-yard line, Brandon to James, the Stewart connection. And it'll be first and goal for the Volunteers. And you know, Bob, we've been talking about Melvin Johnson, number 25, 118 tackles. Center fielder, look at this, come up, force it back inside, and he's a sure tackler, holds on. Well, he has played well at that. We call that the free safety position. 
where he's just free to roam along. He plays both pass coverage and comes up on run support. He's been a real plus for Kentucky. David Cutcliffe says he reads and he goes. And he does them very quickly. First and goal at the four. And looking for the score is little man Stewart wrapped up near the line of scrimmage after a gain of a couple by Robert Stinson the right tackle playing his final game today and he's got five tackles up front. Well he went for 211 against Georgia and he's over a hundred. James Stewart on that Doak Walker list top senior running back in the country. This tailback combination Stewart and Hayden 1485 yards an average of six a carry coming in. Second and one Stewart yes into the end zone and James has his 10th rushing touchdown of the season. That's the way you want your running backs to run the football knowing how far they have to get for that touchdown and just kind of knifing through then try to use that strength to go through there just saw a little bit of a slice to the inside just made that little adjustment and into the, into the end zone he went. And John Bexford out for another point after as Stewart continues his fine afternoon. Now what did you say about Bexford doesn't have a chance. <laughs> He's sure making up for it today. Well this would be his sixth extra point of the day. He needed 157. Yeah, he's now at 151. Carlos Huerta of Miami, the all-time record. And it's 45 to nothing. Again, you want your running back to find that little seam. Now watch the little adjustment right there, the little slide through, turn those shoulders, and break the plane of the end zone. Last year, in Lexington, Tennessee beat Kentucky 48-0. It was Kentucky's worst loss in 70 years. This year they had a worse one when they lost at Florida 73 to 7 and the volunteers are putting another one on them today. 120 to go third quarter. You know the SEC has a great weekend coming up surrounding the SEC during the weekend if you can get to Atlanta. Boy they were some great players. As you named those names, I was thinking along Leroy Jordan. Too small to play. Couldn't play, right? How many years oh, did he yeah. play? <laughs> Played 10 years, 12 years with Dallas. You named Jimmy Taylor. Boy, who'll ever forget Jimmy Taylor with the Green Bay Packers. The great Horning Taylor back backfield combination. There's Billy Jack Haskins out of Paducah, the Kentucky quarterback, fourth stringer. Hey, you can go to that weekend and have a chance to tackle George Rogers from South Carolina. Oh, boy. Nobody else could. He's got, a He's got a road name for him down there, right next to the stadium. <laughs> it ought to be an expressway. And the carry for Mo Williams, nothing doing there. What a weekend that'll be in Atlanta. Hope you folks who are headed for the SEC championship, championship game can be a part of all that. It's going to be a great weekend. And uh, as the league makes the move to Atlanta, now who would you pick for Tennessee now I would have picked Doug Atkins that's the greatest defensive end to ever play football but Bob Johnson's awfully good at center Two play times. action by Haskins out to the right side off the hands of Chris Davis the tight end guess who they picked from Arkansas uh, Lance Allward absolutely Bambi too small can't play but uh, about 10 11 years later they were saying what a player he is Bill Wade from Vanderbilt Johnny oh, yeah. Baker from Mississippi State Tracy Rocker from Auburn Neil Anderson from Florida Charlie Trippy from Georgia Babe Perilli the great Kentucky quarterback now we've told you about a player from every team in the SEC Haskins with play action and across the middle ball should have been caught Clyde should Rudolph should have been <laughs> Should have been. You can't hit a receiver. And look at him. He's just a freshman out there. He's saying, hey, give me a shot here. Nice drop as he gets back in the pocket. Now watch this. Right across the middle. You've got to look the ball in. Don't couch it against your body. Comes right in, bounces right down. You can't hit him any better than that. 30 seconds to go before the fourth quarter. Nicky Nichols will punt again. He's up over 60 punts on the year. Nilo Sylvan. At the 34. He's by the first wave, and he'll get about 12 on the return. 38 yard kick. David Snarden with the tackle, and the Volunteers back to work with 18 seconds to go. Third quarter 
in a 45 nothing blowout here in Knoxville. Well you know there's one quarterback they haven't tried for uh, Tennessee young man that we saw real early in the season got hurt Todd Helton Todd Helton yeah he's back in healthy now for the first time since that Mississippi State game Peyton Manning is the man they call on here of course Helton's career is going to be in baseball I believe yeah they think he'll be a top five draft pick when the baseball teams make their amateur draft next year look at Stewart Boy, in Kentucky territory done around the 45 a gain of about nine did That'll be see? the last play, by the way, of the third quarter. I was going to say, did you see him freeze the cornerback, Wilson, when he came up there? Gave him that little stutter step, stepped right around him, and off he went. That's it for the third quarter in Knoxville. Little man Stewart coming up big today. 45 nothing falls. Back for the fourth quarter. Welcome back to our Leah Apparel SEC Game of the Week. Bob Carpenter, Dave Rowe, Bob Kessling on our SEC stations and on Prime Network around the country. 15 minutes to go. Tennessee second and one at the 45. Straight ahead. Little man Stewart. Let's check on Lee Apero game summary. After three quarters, the total yards a 302 yard difference before that last play. That's incredible to have 88 yards at the end of the third quarter. That's just that's just no offense. That's just put such a, such a burden on your defense. They've been out there the entire game. We told you at the start of today. Kentucky was given up 266 yards a game on the ground. Almost that much already today. And Stewart a breather. Why carry for his buddy with a flag on the play, Aaron Hayden. Aaron Chatez Hayden, the senior out of Mumford High School in Detroit. Those two are best friends, James and Aaron. They've been through a lot together here. Both will finish at least in the top seven all time in Tennessee rushing. And that's on a pretty good list. Personal foul against the Cats. Let's check in with Bob Kessler. Tyrone Hines, of course, when he shifted a middle linebacker, that really helped rejuvenate the Tennessee defense. Where well, there are a couple of other Hines brothers. Dexter is a senior at Brownsville High School, and he's also got a brother, Carlos, who is a junior. Both outstanding players, so there might be a time where there might be three Hineses terrorizing offenses <laughs> in the Southeastern Conference. Hines 57 in the middle there somewhere. Well, the UT defense, 16 points a game their last five games. Since the move was made to get Tyrone in there and move Ben Talley to a down position. First down at the 19, quick opener. And it's Chester Ford who backs up Moose Phillips at fullback with the carry. First time we've seen him all year. That was his first carry of the season. He's a 5'11 sophomore who goes 250 out of Danville, Kentucky. Former USA Today Player of the Year there. Great blocker in a 45 nothing game. He finally gets to carry the football. Aren't you glad they, they uh, realigned those numbers a little bit so you can see them? They're so much clearer now than they were. Well, that's because the sun's not shining on the <laughs> field at the moment. Second down at six. Manning looking to Hayden. Breaks a couple of tackles. And then up to get him was George Harris from strong safety. And Bob, you look at what go, what's gone wrong for K Kentucky today. We talked earlier about not shedding those those blockers and making it to the tackle. They just have their defensive backs are making tackles all day. Today they've just been all over the place. Game Stewart after Johnny Jones within 100 yards now. Aaron Hayden moves up to the number six spot today. Came in with 19-11, so he's got 74 yards today. I think he was just up there talking to Coach, saying, "Hey, Coach, listen." I got a good chance to get a few more yards here. Move up a little bit. How about get me in there? Well, Hayden in there. Howard Carter. Excuse me. That was Jay Graham on that carry. David Snarden there with Carter on the stop. Jay Graham, a sophomore of Kannapolis, North Carolina. And George Harris and his buddies have been busy in that secondary making tackles again. There's been so many tackles made by defensive backs today, and that's not what you want. You just, 22 of them. Yeah, 22 tackles by the defensive backs. On fourth and two. Manning. And the quick opener for the fullback, Chester Ford. His second carry of the year. It's a first and goal. 
Look at that. They're after him, boy. 51, Brent Gibson says, yeah. Let's get the second teamers getting it done. <laughs> this is power football. Control the line of scrimmage. You see the little seam. Keep those legs going, turning, twisting, picking up that first down yardage. Now, some people would think that uh, Phil Fulmer's trying to run up the score, but he certainly is not. In this situation, running the football, keeping it on the ground. All they're doing is running up the field. Yeah. Little delay. Graham, nice move. Third consecutive tackle by George Harris, who has nine on the day. And the balls are very close to the goal line. Boy, that was a stick by Harris, too. Wow, did he come up. Leaguer nice. secondary. We told well, you they lost three starters from last year. They're making a million tackles back there this season. Well, look at when's the last time you saw a defensive back with a neck brace? George Harris has got a neck brace on. That's how many tackles he's made back there. From the one, Graham. And he angles in for the touchdown. Jay Graham has his first rushing touchdown of the year. Aaron Hayden got a couple. And it's Graham in from one yard out here four minutes into the fourth quarter. Again, you don't get penetration. You're not going to stop them from getting in the end zone. They don't get penetration. He runs into the end zone almost standing straight up. There's George Harris, number eight. You see the neck brace on the back of his neck. He's coming from the outside. He's a real go-getter, but he just didn't get there in time. And here comes a seventh extra point attempt for John Bexford. It's 152 in a row. And with 11-10 remaining in the football game, it's Tennessee 52 and Kentucky nothing. 52 nothing. Volunteers. Philip Fulmer still talking to his crew on the near at the far sideline. And they're near a 6-4 record now. Very decisive verdict here at home today. Dio Sanford at his own eight. For Kentucky got away from one man on special teams still on his feet up to the 27 yard line and they never did knock him down. Well they say they remember what you do in November. Look at the vows. The only loss four years ago to Notre Dame ranked number one at the time a five point loss total domination in the month of November. I guess you would call that nasty in November. And usually when they look in their Christmas stocking, there's a bowl game in there somewhere because of those Novembers. Haskins, the quarterback again for Kentucky. Donnell Gordon on the carry. And a guy who had a very short season for the Volunteers, senior quarterback Jerry Colquitt with Bob Kessler. Yes, yeah, seven plays for Jerry. They got hurt in the UCLA game, but you got to run through the tee, but you might not be done here at Tennessee, all right? That's right. I might be the first player in Tennessee history to run through the tee, the tee twice. <laughs> but um, you know, if I get this um, this next year, I'll be real happy that I get it. And um, if not, then um, I'll try to go on into the NFL. Now you're going to apply for medical redshirt. Where does that stand right now? Have you applied yet? Yes, we've already applied, but um, we won't get a reply from the NCAA until about mid December. So the situation now, you still want to play at Tennessee, but if that's turned out, you're you're willing to go ahead and try the NFL now. That's right. Um, you know, I've been making preparations. Um, if I don't get this appeal, and um, I think if I don't get it, then things will turn out right just anyway. Jared, I know a lot of Tennessee fans are very appreciative of what you've done for the program, and wherever you go, we hope you the best. Thanks a lot. All right, Jerry Colquitt, Tennessee's excellent senior quarterback. He had to wait a long time to get his chance because of a guy named Schuler ran the ball once threw it four times and the season came to an end at UCLA up the middle looking for the tight end Chris Davis well, you know Bob that's not an oddity in the NCAA to give that six year for the for the uh, competition it's happened before so he has a good shot at it he had sat behind Schuler for a number of years and said this is my big chance and as you said only got to run what seven plays. So it's something that has happened before. They have granted that, and uh, it certainly would be nice. But then what do you do with that, uh, that fellow named Manning and, of course, uh, that other fellow named Stewart? I think you keep throwing them out there. Second and ten. And the carry from Donnell Gordon. Not much there. Let's check in on our nationwide insurance SEC Scholar Athlete of the Week. He's that guy who keeps winning, Jay Barker at Bama. He's a senior with a 3.2 a 10 
great point in sports fitness management. And Jay, who engineered another great comeback last week and has to face Auburn this week, is our Nationwide Insurance SEC Scholar Athlete of the Week. What a career in Tuscaloosa. What is he, 33-1-1? and one? Is that his record as a starter? 33 out of 35. That's one incredible. Haskins with a little swing out to the left side. Donnell Gordon, not much to work with. And the Cats will kick again. And some SEC All-American honors have rolled in this week. Eric Zier, of course, the Georgia quarterback who's had a great year. Jack Jackson of Florida, the explosive wide receiver and kick return man. And Alabama's reliable kicker, Michael Proctor. He's helped Jay Barker win some of those games. Congratulations to those fine young men of the SEC. Pretty good kick by Nichols. Sean Summers with a fair catch at the foul 15. They won't know how to act starting a possession way back there. 42 yards on the kick. 8.30 remaining in a 52-0 game. Lance Wheaton's first snap ever as the Tennessee quarterback. And he gave it off to Jay Graham for a big gainer there. Lance Wheaton, number 15, a senior out of Kingston, Tennessee. He's been the scout team quarterback for three years, and he just got to snap it between the lines for real for the first time ever. What a thrill. A senior. Get that opportunity. That's wonderful. Come on, let's see him throw it here. That's right. Give him one shot. 8.05 remaining. 52 0 Tennessee. And he will turn and give it to Graham again, who breaks a tackle or two. And they'll be left with third and about three or four. Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouses invite you to come by and register for a trip for two to the Outback Steakhouse Gator Bowl. The fouls could be there. Airfare accommodations tickets all provided by Lowe's. Lowe's knows home improvement. Second down and five. Graham got tripped by one of his offensive linemen, Brad Lampley, who was laying on the turf after being blocked down. Lampley, the third stringer at right guard. You know how the, you can never catch our truck in a mistake? They have already updated Lance Wheaton and said that he was the big factor in the orange and white game in the spring. <laughs> Great to see him get a chance to play. Seven minutes remaining. In the season of Kentucky, Tennessee plays at Vanderbilt next week. It's our Lee Apparel SEC game of the week at 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 Central. Graham twisting and turning, and he was bumped to the turf by Roger Sullivan, who's closing out his career out of McKeesport, PA. Hey, you know what a second punt means? Hopefully, we'll see Harold Dennis of Kentucky. There, there he, he goes. Is. Bill Curry talking about this courageous young man out of Radcliffe Kentucky Harold Dennis. Well he's incredible. He's just he's a great man way before his years uh, beyond his years and before his time before he should have had to be a great inspirational leader. He has made himself into that. And the kick will fall at the 27 and come back a couple of yards and Harold Dennis just moments after Lance Wheaton stepped on the field for the first time he gets to do the same now he's got another little story to add when he goes out and speaks to kids and to youth groups about some of the decisions to make in life and some of the things he's been through great story and how do you like that? He's already talked to a coach saying, now look, I had the angle on that. I could have blocked that. <laughs> you should have put me on the outside. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's marvelous. First down with 5.58 remaining, and Haskins still the quarterback. Mo Williams hasn't had much today. Carried the ball well a couple of times on the first possession. Harold's still pumped. Just well, can't stand still down there. Well, that was an incredible story. Uh, School bus hit by a, a drunk driver going the wrong way on a freeway, and of course the bus caught on fire. And just an incredible story, but what a true winner in a lot of respects. They said he goes out time and time again to talk to young people. 
Second down and seven. Four wide receivers. Billy Jack. And he's got the underneath man, Mo Williams. Twelfth reception of the year for the sophomore halfback out of Columbus, Georgia. And let's check in with Bob Kessling. Yeah, you've been watching the game today. You've seen that Kentucky also has a T on its helmet. It's a black T in honor of three former Wildcat athletes. Ted Presley, a football player, Trent DeGiro, and a baseball player, Troy Trumbo. All three have died since May of 1993. And I guess it kind of sums up what has been such a devastatingly disappointing season for this Kentucky program, but they honor three of the former Wildcat teammates by the T on the back of the helmets. And that went out to the right side. Trevor Hippolyte, a true freshman out of Rockledge, Florida, with the reception. Yeah, Bob, and uh, to tag that story, we have mentioned it earlier today, some outstanding men at the control, though, of the Kentucky football program, Bill Curry and C.M. Newton. They can get it back. We'll see how long it takes. A program that was in a bowl game a year ago, about to go 1-10. and 10 with those 10 losses coming in a row. And they were on a high back on September 3rd. They won the Governor's Cup when they beat Louisville 2014. And getting loose and shaken down to the 35-yard line is Mo Williams. Corey Gaines, the free safety, had to make one of the few tackles the Tennessee secondary has made today. Yeah, this is splitting the line. Good block out there. You see 69, that's Barry Jones coming in there. Good out block. And I'll tell you right now, the offensive line of Kentucky's got a little bit of a bounce. They came back to the huddle, clapping hands, saying, hey, let's see if we can get a score in here. Maybe seeing Harold Dennis on the field did something to them. Three minutes and 50 seconds remaining. And a quick give to Raymond McLaurin, the sophomore wingback. In the East, Tennessee really had no chance to catch Florida. The Gators, of course, clinched last week when we were down there for their victory over South Carolina. Carolina handling Clemson pretty well today, so it appears they'll go six and five and find a bowl. And there's the situation in the West as Bama and Auburn get together today. Hasn't Mississippi State been a real surprise this year? Well, they could have beaten Bama last week, too. But a guy named Barker got in the way. Out to the left side, it's Trevor Hippolyte again. Alabama's rated fourth in the AP poll this week. Florida third, Auburn sixth. SEC, the only league with three of the top six teams in the country. Now this is a good pass out to the flat. All of a sudden, this Billy Jack says, hey, wait a minute. I want my chance. Good out pattern, good clearance there from the corner. Look the ball in. Those are kind of plays that they needed early in this football game to get uncranked, get their offense in gear so they didn't put so much pressure on their defense. He's four for eight throwing the football. First down at the 21 of Tennessee and lifting up way too early. Mark Askin, the right tackle. Boy, that's so tough. When you're a big offensive lineman like, like uh, Askin is, and you're kind of sitting back there and all of a sudden you kind of just fall out of your stance. Right tackle, offense, still first down. Hey now, what's with these college uh, referees now saying the <laughs> position? They're not supposed to identify those guys. I thought that and kind of embarrassment was saved for the pros. You know what? Uh, we've got to pick a player in the game, don't we? Pretty soon. I think we've got a surprise uh, in state. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, I, I first, think so. First and 15 with 3:04 remaining. Out of the gun. Askins waiting. Ball was tipped. And then off the hands of the intended receiver, number 33, Jebron Farah. A junior split end. Seeing some rare playing time here toward the end of the season. And defending on the play was Heath Smargesso. A lot, of a lot of players get a lot of chance to play today, and that's really great. Four wide receivers on second and 15 from the Tennessee 26. Hey, where'd our crowd go? This place was jammed a few minutes ago. It's just you and me here and a few other friends. Askins out to the right side, and the ball caught by Ray McLaurin, the wing back. He'll get out of bounds. Down around the 21-yard line with 2.51 remaining. 
Yeah, it sounds like the Neyland <laughs> Library right now, not Neyland Stadium. You know something I heard uh, I was asked to make a, a, a reference to? It's Neyland. It's not Neyland. Uh, right. some, some people have called in and said, hey, the announcers are saying that wrong, but it's actually pronounced Neyland. Of course, one of the great coaches ever. The general. Yes, sir. Third down and five. Haskins with a quick drop. Can he escape? Gets it away. It's in the area of Raymond McLaurin. He was in the grasp, his jersey was, of Bill Duff. Duff is the third string right tackle behind Leland Taylor, who's been ejected, and another redshirt freshman like Duff is, Trey Teague. Yeah. Oh, a fourth down play coming up with 2.43 remaining. Well, I bet you old Billy Jack was sitting there saying, I'm not going to get in today. I'm just going to sit here, wait for my little turn next year. Maybe I'll get a chance in spring. And all of a sudden, Bill Curry said, hey, get in there, take a few snaps, and see what you can do in game action. Hey, those guys out of Paducah, they want to play. Great program there at Tillman High School. Out of the gun, fourth and five. And it's picked off at the line of scrimmage. Billy Barron. Down to the 40. There are flags all over the place. And the Tennessee bench is mobbing their redshirt <laughs> freshman, Billy Barron. Hey, that was pretty good speed there. Look at him. He's exhausted. He can't get up off the ground. <laughs> oh, boy. They love his potential. He's out of River Ridge, Louisiana, Rummel High School. They think he's going to be a big time player here. Well, we could have had him in the Oxford Challenge. <laughs> On the run back, blocking all the ways. On the receiving Ooh. team, first down. Well, he doesn't care. He got the pick. <laughs> what a thrill. Catch that football and take off running. Look at him. Look how tired he is. He's doing some deep breathing. 6'3", 271. He was a high school All-American in River Ridge, Louisiana. And he's saying, Coach, if I had gotten to the outside, I was gone. 231 remaining. Lance Wheaton with another series. And the give is to Ronnie Pillow. The freshman running back out of Columbia, Tennessee. Volunteers will go to six and four. They'll go four three in SEC play with a date at Vandy across the state. Next Saturday, we'll be there to bring it to you on Thanksgiving weekend. How close did James Stewart get? Maybe we can get a little update on that, see how many yards Stewart got. 143 yards, I believe he got today. There's Pillow again. And he needed 227, so he'll need about an 80, 85 yard day next week to become the all time leading Tennessee rusher. Charlie Garner was only here for two years. And he got into the top four with 2,089 yards. First down at the 32 with a minute 30 remaining. And to give off the right side for Neil Kearney. Number 35. A senior getting a little playing time here out of Kingport. Now what they ought to do is take the names of all the people who have stayed for the game. When you get a score like this, 52 to nothing, you take the names of all the people who have stayed and you say, now they are real volunteers. They're, they're people that stick it out. Hey, there's some <laughs> folks uh, still hanging around with Blue on, too, from Lexington. I know, that's true. Look over there. Second down and nine. In the last minute, Pillow. And wrapping him up was Lamont Smith. Who's the third string guy at the Buck linebacker spot? And Philip Fulmer, I asked him yesterday what he took out of this season with the slow start when they were one and three. He said, We've know, We know now that we can fight back and we'll have a lot of experience on this team for 95 based on that slow start and the way we battled back. And now they could be headed for seven and four. Well, it's so hard when you lose a quarterback to, to regroup. And they did. They regrouped quickly. And Billy Williams was hurt in that game. 
Ronnie Pillow tackled from behind by Reggie Rusk. He almost broke it at midfield. A 14 yard play. And that'll just about do it. There are 14 seconds left on the clock. The officials will restart it and maybe one more play. And Looks Bob, like the Vowels are just going to stand around, take off the helmets, and that will be it. 52 0, Tennessee. And the beer barrel will stay in Knoxville for another year. And toting it around is Kevin Mays, the senior, the only senior on that offensive line. We're back to Knoxville in a moment.